welcome to the channel where all you got to do is build your own flow bench. Okay, so today we're going to play with some sob heads. This is a B202 head, like an early sob 9000. This is a later model, still a 9000, but completely different car. Um, this came with a Tronic 5.5 control system. This came with a Bosch Jetronic that was just a batch fire distributor, kind of old school crude fuel injection. Um, you can see these are very similar, but there's some subtle differences. Some mounting pads are in different spots and how it seals is in different. Um, these ones flow pretty terrible, um, not because Saab designers didn't know what they were doing. They were asked probably to get a lot of swirl, which they did by making this port a dump port, or this port a dump port, and this port a tumble port, and so generate some swirl, but you lose a lot of flow in this. If you want, try to make these flow better, you gotta take like three pounds of metal out of it. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So, and these are getting hard to find. These are pretty plentiful. So instead of trying to make old junk work, we get less old junk, that's a little bit better. However, if you try to put this head onto this motor, a B2 TO2 motor, it doesn't work. And the reason for that is, this is the head gasket for the B202, as you can see. Seals up nice. You try to stick that onto this guy, you get some pretty big leak pass here and here. So that doesn't really work. So what we've done is we've taken this guy. This is this cover for the B202. And we've welded on some extra material here to give it something to seal against. So, and when you do that, you have to use this gasket. So as you can see, that doesn't work. And now it does. So it's a, it's a swappable head, uh, but it takes a little bit of effort. So don't expect to go to pick and pull, grab a cylinder head, bolt it on, and not have a problem. The other thing that you have to modify is this part of the cylinder head kind of crashes into some timing chain bits. So you have to you have to machine that out or grind it out, whatever you got. So um, these do take the same camshafts. Um, you have to use the sprockets from the this head on here, but the cams are the same. You can still drive a distributor if you want. A couple of this, these little fittings and stuff are a little bit different, um, but nothing, nothing really insurmountable. Um, the intake manifold is quite a bit different. Um, these ports are quite a bit different than these. And ports, intake manifold that'll bolt onto this will make the port in the wrong spot on this guy. See, this is, this is quite a bit smaller than this. So yeah, that's like a quarter inch lower. So if you bolt the manifold for this onto here, it's gonna have a very big mismatch. Um, and if you try to use the manifold off of this in the Sonda, it doesn't work because there's a fuel cell there. So we converted this to use throttle bodies from a BMW E85, or S85, sorry. Um, so that's what these little scribe lines are on here. We have to port match to the, to the throttle body for that. Um, this thing's just about ready to go. I got my um, lightweight springs in here, and I got my actuator so you can move the valves just by turning this. It's a one millimeter pitch thread, so one revolution gives you one millimeter of valve lift. So that's about it. We'll get uh, get this thing on the flow bench and start flowing. Okay, so we're ready to do some flowing. So this is an adapter. So you see we made one with a 90 millimeter bore, another with a 93 millimeter bore, because Saab actually made a 2.1 liter that has a bigger bore. Everything else is essentially the same. So we're gonna flow this on 90, because that's what this, this motor came with. We'll probably flow it later on the 93, just to see the difference. Notice there's dowel pins. 
here so it gets put on correctly relative to the bore. That makes a big difference. So another thing that you have to be cognizant of is it flows way better without the spark plug in, so not really representative. So we'll have to do that at some point. Go. Work plug. So, time to play with some kids. Kids clay. Buy this at the local hobby shop, hobby store. Roll yourself out a nice log. And then we're going to just gonna just make a nice bell mouth around here. It will flow absolutely terrible if you don't do this. That sharp edge will ruin everything. First time I float a cylinder head for my job. Forgot to put this on. Showed the boss flow numbers. He just about fell out of his chair because they were so terrible. That's okay, that guy needed exercise anyway, getting out of his chair. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you're flowing the same port all the time, I like to make a nice one out of uh, wood or something that you could just put it on the, on the studs and it dowels itself in position properly. But this is a port that we're not going to end up caring about because we got the different throttle bodies anyway. Oh, yeah, you just kind of, it's kind of yucky playing with this stuff. It's kind of greasy, but it's the job done. Okay. There you have it. That's. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna open these valves up one millimeter. It's an M6 by one bolt. So I'll just mark those with a little piece of Sharpie there. Got my handy dandy data sheet. So. Okay, that's up to 10 millimeters. It looks like it's all done at eight, which is good because it's all the lift this thing has anyway. So we'll go put it into the data spreadsheet. So after flowing that head, I poked all the numbers in 
to my spreadsheet here. So let's go through this a little bit. So actually I, I flowed it and then it didn't really look great. So I went and reflowed it again. Um, so what happened was the clay kind of fell off and jumped inside the port. So it kind of messed up the flow. So just the top three millimeters or something. But let's take a look at this. So this is intake port, uh, flow bench number. Um, there's a description of the test that you can do right in there, but V2 for stock. Um, number of flow valves slowed. You have to put that in for the flow coefficients and stuff. Uh, valve seat width, again, for the flow coefficients and isotropic valve area versus flow area. Um, valve head diameter, you need that. This this you don't really need. This is for um, the constant flow data stuff. It calculates the rated airflow for swirl testing, but we didn't do any of that. Um, then you put the pour and the stroke in there. Inner valve seat diameter, this is this is important to calculate the um, low lift curtain area. Um, then the valve seat and the maximum lift uh, and stem diameter. So, and then this one's relatively important. Um, everybody, well, most people in the industry flow either to 20 inches or 28 inches. Um, with this flow bench, you don't have to flow it to 28 inches. Um, it'll normalize it for you. like. Some of these are, they're all pretty close to 28 inches, but you don't have to get exactly. Um, it just corrects it up. It uses the square root of the pressure ratios to compensate, as long as it's fairly close. Actually, it can be pretty far off and it'll still, it'll still correlate pretty well. You could be off, you know, you could have half the delta P and it's still pretty close. So, um, but these, these numbers here, are something, yeah, something happened to them. Right, this is approximately the same, but it's different. So, um, so let me look at, let me go through how this um, this spreadsheet works. Um, poked your raw data into here. Um, in this, it calculates mass airflow kilograms per second based on the mass airflow curve. Um, converts at uh, liters per second and and this report here kind of calculates um, normalized CFM, that's just standard temperature and pressure conditions, um, and also does some flow fo coefficients, discharge coefficients, bore flow coefficients. Um, probably don't need that, but it shows basically if you have a um, one cylinder head on a different size bore, you can see if it in if it's better or worse because the bigger bore should make it flow better but sometimes it doesn't so it's just kind of food for thought you don't really need it so this is the volume flow um, it also takes an average of it so the average is based on um, this number here so if you put a maximum of 10 and you that that averages the through the 10th, 10 millimeters of lift. So that's what that does. So this is what we got for a valve port flow. This is this is essentially a stock, pretty nice curve. Um, and then this is the two points at the top of the, um, the high flow area that the clay bell mouth kind of fell out and jumped inside the port, blocked it a little bit. So um, this is flow in kilograms per second. This is isotropic flow area versus geometric flow area. So this is basically, it looks at the curtain area at low lift. Um, and once once the curtain area low lift is exceeded by the port size, it kind of ignores it. So this is, this is typical what you get. You usually get a little bit above this one-to-one um, -one line. I'm not sure why, but um, that's typically what you get. Swirl, we didn't do any swirl stuff. Um, this is a flow coefficient. If your if flow coefficient's above one, then you forgot to put spark plug in or something. That That's uh, it's definitely not possible. So um, isotropic valve area versus non-dimensional valve lift. So this just uses the, the lift versus the diameter of the valve. 
not super useful. Flow coefficient, again, we don't have flow meter on this one, so we didn't use it. And then bore flow coefficient. So if you if you changed the bore on one of these, let's say we made this 95 millimeter bore, and we looked at the bore flow coefficient, see it, it made that one better and that one worse. So that's all that does. Change that back to 90. Um, and then we have the mass arc meter curve here, which is, so you put these numbers in, this is actually not the right number, but um, you put the numbers of your mass error curve in here, and then it generates a transfer function for it. So this is y equals this crazy number times voltage to the fifth plus this times voltage to the fourth, blah, 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 blah. So, and then over here, um, this is the actual data for the mass error meter. And then this is the number that if you put this transfer function in, this is the solved number, right? It has this crazy that to that power and that to that power, right? So um, this is the number that it really should be, and this is what it gets, right? So they're pretty close. They're within one or two. This is in kilograms per second, so. So, and then if you go back to the report, um, that's that crazy equation again. That's the curve fit data, right? And you'll see it over here too. So that's how the that's how the spreadsheet works. It's not super complicated, but one of the things that's super important is you do this, which is compensating so you can normalize it to 28 inches. Otherwise, <clears throat> like on a super flow, you gotta fiddle futz around with the the Basically, it's like a valve, a throttle valve. If you want to get right to 28 inches, you got to like spend a lot of time futzing around getting it to that exact number, because um, there's no there's no correlation in the. Right? You just look at the, you just look at the chart and populate the number. So um, this is super convenient to to be able to just get it kind of close, and it gives you the number you need.